Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here. The lab coat's on back order. The Halloween theme is back in full effect. And it is Monday, October 17th, which means it's time for another Pokemon news update video thingy here on the channel. <laughs> now, the first thing to mention is actually quite a happy note, so <clears throat> let me go back to normal mode for this. We have broken 900 subscribers on the channel. Woo! Which means we do have a special unboxing this week. First of all, I will mention, as per usual, I do have a booster pack I'm going to be opening up of Pokemon TCG. It's going to be the Breakpoint expansion. As always, the code card inside goes to a lucky viewer that answers the question of the day, which we'll get into as we get to the unpacking or unboxing or pack opening or whatever you want to call it towards the end of the video. But as a special thank you to everybody out there, <coughs> pardon me, for breaking 900 subscribers, we are going to move Mr. Skullhead out of the way because he is holding back the special Pokemon Mythical Collection for Keldeo. I'm going to put you back here, Mr. Skullhead. But yes, for hitting 900 subscribers, this video will feature the unboxing of the Keldeo Pokemon Mythical Collection. Mythical Pokemon Collection Pokemon TCG Keldeo. I think that's the proper order to say that all in, but we will be unboxing this. And the code card in here, which does give you the special Keldeo promo card, card sleeves, a deck box, and two generation booster packs. That code card is, you guessed it, going out to a lucky viewer as well for answering the question of the day that I'll give you towards the end as I open this and that random booster pack. But for the time being, let's get back to the creepiness because we have to go over last week's question of the day. And let me get my creepy notes here. Nothing really creepy about them, I just need to keep the creep factor going for the Halloween theme. Anyway, question of the day from last week was in relation to one of the recent trailers that had been released for Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. The question was, which stage one evolution of the starter Pokemon in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon is your favorite and why? And the answer was, or the winner, was a viewer by the name of Unknown Spike. And Unknown Spike's response is, <clears throat> All Stage 1 evolutions for the starters are amazing because they are still unique and they have something special. Keep up the work and I hope you hit 1,000 subscribers soon. And then they go on to say, where's the Halloween theme? Now, admittedly, <clears throat> I didn't have the Halloween theme last week because as I... No, you know what? I'm just going to say this regular voice. I didn't have it last week because as I said, I was having trouble getting things recorded on time and I decided... Monday night I could have recorded for like the creepiness for a Tuesday video upload, but uh, usually when new Pokemon Sun and Moon information comes out, it's on a Tuesday. I figured, you know, I'm going to wait and record Tuesday day so I can have that news right off the bat. As it turns out, there was no news on Tuesday, so it was kind of a wasted effort, but as you see, we are back with the creepy factor. Now, side note, this isn't a question of the day material or anything, but do you think I should decorate a little bit more, have some sort of creepy stuff back there, and if so, what? What should, what should I do to dress the place up a little bit more? I've got skull head, I've got the dry bones back here. You cannot really see too well, but we do have Umbreon, who's there kind of anyway, as a Pokemon character. Darkrai is up there as well. I don't know, I could throw some cobwebs up. Anyway, that's all beside the point. I want to say congratulations to Unknown Spike for winning the code card, which was from the Breakthrough Booster Pack I opened. I didn't mention the pack, or the expansion yet, but Breakthrough Code Card did go to Unknown Spike. If you're a chance to win, code card from either Breakpoint or the Keldeo Collection. All you gotta do is answer the question of the day, which I'll give you towards the end of the video as I open these two things up. And on Sunday, October 23rd, I'll be doing the drawing. And I'll give you more information on that as we do the actual unboxing and unpacking and such. So, I do want to go back to Creepy Voice for a moment because, as Unknown Spike did say, They hope I hit 1,000 subscribers soon, and by that they mean, da 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 da, the Pikachu collection. So I'm just kind of going back and forth between the voice, you know. I'm gonna, I'll be regular for now. But the Pikachu Red and Blue collection back there, Pikachu EX Red and Blue collection, I mean to say, is being held in reserve until we hit a thousand subscribers on the channel, which maybe. When Sun and Moon comes out, that could boost us to that point. Because when we get to there, I'm going to do an unboxing of that on the channel for the uh, you know news update video thingy. And Code Card will go out to a viewer for that. Plus, I want to pick up a second copy of this or whatever the most recent sort of you know uh, Pokemon EX collection box is. I want to do a physical mail out of that collection to another lucky viewer that answers that question of the day when I do have that unboxing. And just as a throwback to you guys out there for supporting the channel for so long and getting us to the landmark 1,000 subscriber count. In the, well, you know, the big overall scheme of YouTube, 
1,000 subscribers might not be that big compared to some of the uh, major channels, but for me, 1,000 is going to be pretty amazing to have hit. So, look forward to that, and if you're not currently subscribed, feel free to do so. Check out my channel for other things you might like, such as Pokemon Sapphire playthrough going on, we've got Pokemon Stadium 2 currently on the go, weekly Pokemon TCG matches, I think that's it. Well, Sun and Moon information as new trailers come out, and starting tomorrow, we do have, as I mentioned here, the Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon demo will be available for download from the Virtual Console, or not Virtual Console, the eShop on the Nintendo 3DS system. And you can bet your bottom dollar I'm going to be doing a playthrough of that. I'm going to get it as soon as I can on Tuesday. I'm going to wake up early Tuesday morning, see if I can get it. I want to have a video playthrough of just the demo, because I have to, or asked people if they wanted to see it done. They said yes, and I said even if people... Uh, no, I want to say, even if people were adamant against me doing it, I would do it anyway. I'd probably, you know, decide what you guys want to see and stuff, but I was kind of leaning towards doing it anyway, and the fact that a number of people out there want to see it happen means it's going to happen. So, starting Tuesday, for I don't know how long it will last, because there's no real way to tell how long the demo is going to be. It could be a one-part, two-part, maybe a three-part sort of a series or something. I will be doing a Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon demo here on the channel, and it's going to push the Pokemon Sapphire episodes back a little bit, probably, because... Uh, I don't want to have too much gameplay footage of two separate games on the go at the same time on the same days, actually. So, for example, I'm doing Pokemon Stadium on the weekends, whereas the main Sapphire playthrough throughout the week. That way they're not overlapping each day. And I figure if I was going to have a video game on the, uh, the weekdays, it's probably the Pokemon Sun or Pokemon Moon that's going to catch more attention, because that's the more recent game, it's the newest game, it's the one people want to see, right? So... I'm going to focus on getting that out as soon as the demo comes out, and as soon as we're done the demo playthrough, it'll be back to business as usual for Pokemon Sapphire, leading up to the release of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, the full games, a month after tomorrow. Is it really just a month after tomorrow? That's kind of crazy. I was, it's, it's just starting to hit me now a little bit, I think. But anyway, as I say, come back tomorrow, Tuesday, for the beginning of the demo playthrough of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon here on the channel. I'm sure many other people out there are going to be doing it as well, but for those of you that are going to stick with me and watch my playthrough in addition to anyone else, I'm going to say thanks for your support, and hopefully I'll make it enjoyable for you to watch me going through the demo. So, what else is there to mention in the world of news? Let's talk about Pokemon Go for a little bit. First of all, a couple new updates have occurred in the world of Pokemon Go. There is something to do with the gyms. Now, if you've been playing Pokemon Go, and you go to the gyms, you'll know that... Just one sec here. I'm going to start up a recording on here. I'm going to show you some footage of something. But anyway, if you go to some Pokemon gyms in your area of your same team, you know how sometimes the training might be a little bit on the difficult side, because if you get to a gym a little bit later than everyone else has been there, well, suddenly the CP of your friendly team Pokemon are too high for you to really do anything to try to increase the prestige and make a space for yourself. So, that being the case, it's kind of difficult for you to have fun in gyms. But one of the updates they've recently done for Pokemon Go is updating the gym training so that you don't limit yourself to just one Pokemon of yours to bring into the gym and see how far you can go. You can actually bring a team of six. And the opposing Pokemon CP could be lowered to make training a little bit more easier for you, which is good because that's always been a big deterrent of mine personally when I would uh, go to the, air, or the gyms in the area and find I can't even really engage in them because I am not the high enough CP. Currently my highest CP Pokemon is a Starmie at level or CP 1200 something. But I see Pokemon that are up like near the 2000s or even higher than that. And I can't really even compare to that, right? So anyway, I like the idea of the updated gym thing. What I like even more though is a new catch bonus they've included. So if you've been playing Pokemon Go from the very beginning, you know they've had medals that you can get. Medals to record how far you've walked, how many Pokestops you've hit, how many evolutions you've made, and how many of each species of Pokemon, or I shouldn't say species, each type of Pokemon you have captured. So I'm going to go into my information right here. I'm going to check out my trainer information. You'll see here that I'm walking with Bushroot my Gloom. If I scroll down, you'll see we got two different sections for medals now. First of all, you see, I, how many evolve, or evolutions have I had? I've evolved 200. I'm a scientist! Wow, I guess that goes in hand in hand with being a professor. I got all my other medals here, but you'll see there's another section down here. These show images of all the different types of Pokemon, and some of them have gold circles around them. So, as you've been catching Pokemon, you'll see that it increases. For example, let me click the dragon one down here. I've caught 6 of 10, and the rewards are, once I catch 10, I'll get a plus 1 dragon type catch bonus. What that means is, for example, let's check out this circle for the normal type. 
I now have, since I have a gold rating in this uh, metal, I've caught 674 normal types, all oh, with so many Pidgey around here. And that gives me a plus three normal type catch bonus. I think you can actually choose which one you want. As you can see, I'm selecting back and forth between the bronze, silver, and gold. Of course, I'm going to go with the gold. But it's like, it makes it easier for you to capture those different types. So all these times that you've been trying to capture, say, a wild Growlithe or something, if they keep running away, if you can catch other fire types in the area and get yourself a nice higher up metal of fire type, suddenly Growlithe will be that much easier for you to catch next time you see it. And apparently, if we're talking a dual-type Pokemon, let's say, for example, if I found, um, what is a dual-type Psychic Pokemon? Okay, let's say Slowpoke. You see here, I have a silver medal for Psychic, so I get a plus two catch bonus for Psychic, but a plus three medal, or plus three bonus for the gold medal for uh, uh, Water-type. They say that it's an average of the two bonuses that you have for these Pokemon. So, for example, the uh, Water and Psychic-type Slowpoke, I would have a, I guess, 2.5 increased catch rate because I don't have a plus 3 for both. But it's supposed to average the, the bonuses that you have for the two types. So, it's a nice little feature they've added in. It's going to help you capture some other Pokemon, maybe some rare ones that come along the way. Now that I have this normal type thing, if I ever find another Snorlax around the corner from my house, which did happen one time, and it ran away immediately after breaking out of one Pokeball, this gives me a plus 3 chance to catch that Snorlax if it ever comes back. So that is all, wait, hang on, I'm going to stop recording this here. That is all that I'm going to talk about for Pokemon Go as far as the updates go. I do just want to mention, however, uh, some people have been asking about the videos for Pokemon Go on the channel, and I've been saying in the comments, there's really not enough content yet in the game for me to do a full-fledged video update. For example, these two new features, the updated gym training and the catch bonuses, I've just discussed them, and I've given you the information about them right there. I didn't, like, that doesn't really constitute enough content for me to do another half hour video. And the other downside is, I really have limited access to transportation about where I can go personally. Like, I can't just go in the middle of, like, the, the forest, right, and start recording stuff there, because my transportation is limited. So, I am kind of stuck to the areas that I have been doing videos in so far, and there's really nothing new to show off there. Now, what I'm waiting for, and I do want to bring the videos back at some point, but I have to wait till a major update happens, and in my mind, in my eyes, a major update is going to be when the next generation of Pokemon are introduced. So, we're talking Gen 2, the Johto Pokemon. If and when they do release those Pokemon in Pokemon Go, I'm going to get out there as soon as I can and do another sort of sweep over the areas that I've been to before, because now there's going to be so many new things to find. All these new species of Pokemon. And I'm going to be able to make use of all these new things, such as the updated gym training and the new capture bonuses to make things more interesting from the beginning of Gen 2's adventures in Pokemon Go. So for anyone that wants to see Pokemon Go footage, unfortunately it is not on the channel for the time being, but once the next huge update happens, you can rest assured I'm going to try to get some footage out there. Another deterrent is the fact that the editing was kind of difficult for it, but also the audio quality really wasn't all that good. And I didn't like having to have, you know, there's all this background noise of traffic and the wind blowing by and such. I don't really have the right equipment to get good audio. And maybe I'll have it by the time the next update comes out for Pokemon Go. Hopefully. If not, I'll still work with what I have. But I want to try to get good audio quality for that. Plus, when I go to Heroes Beacon at the Pokemon League and do interviews with players and such there. So, again, Pokemon Go will be back at some point. I just don't know when the next generation is going to be out for the game. So, that should cover everything for Pokemon Go I wanted to mention. And what else is in the news here? Well, we can talk about a few new things in Pokemon TCG. They've shown some more cards from the Evolutions expansion coming up in... I still haven't looked this up. Just one sec. I'm going to look it up on my phone right now. Okay, Google. Pokemon.com TCG. And I'm going to bring up some information or some photos, actually, on my computer. Uh, da -da -da -da. So, the next expansion... Pokemon TCG Evolutions is going to be out. Bear with me here. I don't want the featured cards. I just want to see the Evolutions trading card game. You know what? I'm not going to find it, am I? Anyways, let's just ex uh, ignore this. I know the pre-release is this Saturday coming, I think. The one that I'll be attending for 
the Pokemon League at Heroes Beacon. If not this Saturday, it's the one after, and about a week or two after that. I think it's the first weekend, uh, first week in November that we're gonna be getting the cards. Anyway, if you're not, if, well, <laughs> if you're not sure, I'm not sure, obviously. Let's go to Pokemon.com, go to the TCG section, and see what they have for the date. And meanwhile, we're gonna take a look right now at three cards they've revealed from the upcoming expansion. First of all, here you see Slowbro EX. It is 180 HP, water type of course. For two colorless, it can slack off. It says heal 60 from this Pokemon. This Pokemon can't attack during your next turn, so not super good, but I guess in combination with the rough seas, you could heal another 60 both those turns, so technically healing 120 overall. Not terribly bad. You can also have three water energy attached to do Flash Splash for 100 damage. But what's interesting is the evolution of Mega Slowbro EX goes up to 220 HP and retains its water typing. For 3 water energy, the LOL Roll Spin, 100 plus. This Pokemon is now confused. During your next turn, this Pokemon's LOL Roll Spin attack does 100 more damage before applying weakness and resistance. Immediately, the first thing that came to mind with this would be we could easily go with a uh, Pokemon Center Lady, for example, to heal up or just a full heal, perhaps. You could also combine this with the All Night Party and Hypno. And from the bench, Hypno can use its Good Night Baby's ability to put Slowbro to sleep, which actually overrides the confusion. Then the All Night Party could wake up Mega Slowbro EX and heal 30 damage from it. So that could be a good combination to throw into the deck as well. The last card they've revealed is technically, in a way, three cards, but they've only shown the image of one. That's right. Blastoise Spirit Link. We are getting Spirit Links for the... Co uh, the I was going to say... Kanto and Hoenn, the Cohen? No, the Kanto starters of Blastoise, Venusaur, and Charizard. We are finally getting spirit links for these guys. What I really like is this is set up in the same format as, or the card layout as the original base set of trainer cards, which is a really nice throwback. It's so, okay, as a longtime player of Pokemon TCG, or rather a longtime collector, it's kind of mind warping to look at the format of this trainer card, the layout and realize it's applying itself to Mega EX Pokemon cards. It's like, that bridges so many generations and so many years, like 20 years apart, it's like, that doesn't seem to mesh together in my head. But, here you have it. Uh, Spirit Links for the starters. So, basically, think of this. You can Mega Evolve your Charizard EX into either of the two Flash Fire Mega Charizard EXs and attack immediately 300 damage that's why that's an expanded format thing. Those Charizard are not legal for the standard format. So they're not going to be overpowered in standard, which is pretty okay. So that is all to mention for the Pokemon TCG. And you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm going to go to Pokemon.com right now. I'm going to find out exactly when this set comes out. And I'm also going to check out when exactly the pre-release is that I'll be attending. So let's go to Pokemon.com. Bear with me as I look stuff up on two different devices at the same time here. Where am I going? So trading card game. Show me the evolutions. And onto the Heroes Beacon calendar. So the next set of cards. Why do they not have a quick link to it here? They got the evolutions here on the page. There we go. So the release date is November 2nd, so wow, that's actually pretty early in November. And the pre-release tournament for Heroes Beacons Pokemon League is October 29th, which is not this Saturday, but the Saturday following. Is that right? Yes. Is that right? What day is this? Anyway, Saturday, October 29th is when we will be having our local pre-release for the Pokemon TCG Evolutions expansion. I'll be there probably being a lot more coherent and doing my professory duties as judge and also video recapping the entire thing which means that following Wednesday will be a nice video recap and live demo of a lot of these new cards in play and all these pack openings and all sorts of fun excitement of the new expansion coming out and the expansion itself does go on sale November 2nd at which point you can get your own copies of these cards and I forget what it is I think Toys R Us is getting them a couple days early Barnes and Noble a couple days early as well. I forget, there's something going on there. A couple different outlets are getting these cards one or two days ahead of schedule. So go to Pokemon.com, check out the TCG page for all that information if you want to get these cards even earlier than the release date of November 2nd. I think that covers pretty much everything there. Now I do want to mention one other thing, and this is kind of relating into the question of the day. You know what? I haven't been doing the Halloween voice all this time. I think I'm more suited for doing this anyway. 
However, the, uh, the last thing I want to mention regarding the Pokemon Sun and Moon games. Now, if you go to Pokemon.com, which I'm doing here, but you can't see it, the main page, it shows Type Null evolving into Sil Valley with Gladion beside it. The title of this image and clickable link says, Build a Bond with Powerful Pokemon. When you click that, you go to the Pokemon Sun, Pokemon Moon page. So, if you go there and read the descriptions of the uh, star uh, Stage 1 evolutions for the starters, Dartrix, Toracat, and Brione, they all make reference to having a strong connection and strong bond with special trainers and such. And Silvalli even says something like, when it finds a trainer it can form a strong enough bond with, it evolves into Silvalli. So, here's what I'm thinking. We see that in the demo, they're giving us Ash Greninja, or rather Greninja, with Battle Bond ability, a new ability we've never heard of before, and this allows Greninja to transform into Ash Greninja, which in the anime happens when Ash and Greninja have a strong enough bond together. So, it says Battle Bond is an ability no other Pokemon has had yet, and that is true, but my question of the day for you, and I'm going to give it to you right now, is... Do you think other Pokemon will gain access to the Battle Bond ability in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon? Because something that people have been debating for a little while now is, since they say the Ash Greninja transformation is supposed to be a step above Mega Evolution, are they going to incorporate that into the new games? And that's been kind of tossed around a lot, that has some feasibility to it. I'm thinking this might be what's happening, because they said something way back when in an earlier issue of Koro Koro that Rockruff and the three starters will all have a special secret. Now, back then, I think people were led to believe it meant they all shared the same secret, but now it seems like maybe they all have a secret, not necessarily the same one connecting them all. So now people are debating that maybe... So we know now the secret of Rockruff is split evolution based on which version of the game you have. That might not be the case for the starters. I kind of hope it is personally, because I'd like to see two different final evolutions for starters, because that would be a completely new thing in the world of Pokemon. But now the possibility is, what if the starter Pokemon can get Battle Bond as an ability? So what I'm thinking is... So anyway, before I get to my thoughts, I'm just going to say to answer that question of the day, just leave a comment down below and include the hashtag QOTD in your comment, and you go into the running for the code cards from... The Breakpoint and Keldeo Collection Boxes will open up just a moment. And on Sunday, October 23rd, everybody that has answered that question with the hashtag QOTD in the comment will have a random drawing, a couple names will be chosen from everyone that answers the question with the hashtag to get one of those two code cards. So, my thought on this is, you know that there's some trainers in the game, or not even trainers, but certain characters in the game, that if you bring a fully evolved starter Pokemon to them, they can teach them sort of like an elemental hyper beam. You know, they can teach Frenzy Plant to any of the Grass Starter Stage 2s. They can teach Blast Burn to the Fire ones and Hydro Cannon to the Water ones. There could be somebody in these games that can replace your starter's ability, the natural ability Overgrow, uh, Blaze, or Torrent, could possibly replace it with Battle Bond. And if they do that, then it's not a mega evolution, but your starter could possibly battle bond and reach a higher stage just like Ash Greninja can. So, again, do you think that that's going to be a possibility? Because everything for a lot of these Pokemon seems to be pushing the bond aspect. You know? So Valley saying it needs to find a strong trainer. The two stage, or the, sorry, the three stage one evolutions for the starters all having descriptions relating to, you know, I think it says something like Dartrix is really not aloof or whatever it is, but just more in tune with his own appearance and such. And it takes a good bond with a trainer to make it focus so there's a lot of bond talk going on and even this title here build a bond with powerful pokemon i don't know battle bond could be a thing and not just delegated to ash greninja so anyway leave me your thoughts down below in the comments there hashtag qotd to answer the question and let me know what you think about battle bond will it be another ability that other pokemon can get or is it going to be specific to just ash greninja with all that i do believe i've covered all of the news I don't see anything else I need to mention, so it is now time to open up the Breakpoint Booster Pack and the long-awaited Keldeo Mythical Pokemon Collection Box. Code cards going out to you, blah, 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 you viewers out there. So without any further ado and any further stumbling of my words, let's get started. So let's now crack into these two packs right here. First of all, we're going to let Keldeo sit back just for a moment and fall over, but let's open up the littler pack, the smaller pack first of all. The Breakpoint 
save the best for last, or, nah, that's not necessarily true. What if we actually get the better cards out of the breakpoint? Only way to know is to crack this open, grab that code card, and hide it to the side for the lucky winner on Sunday, the 23rd. That was, whoops, wrong way, here we go. Who happens to win this by answering that question of the day? So now, get all the cards out. One was trying to stick inside there. Let's see what I get out of the breakthrough, sorry, break point booster pack. Focus in nicely. We're starting things off with a Cricket Tot. We've got a Pancham, Skorupi, Rattata, and a Slowpoke. We're going to have a soon EX evolution of yours there, buddy. Uncommon card, starting with a Perugly with Man Press. We have a Great Ball. Not too great. I mean, not too bad. <laughs> Delinquent, discard a Stadium card in play. If you do, your opponent discards three cards from his or her hand. You're very annoying. I've dealt with you many times. Reverse foil card is Esper. And the rare card of the pack is a Luxray with Bite and Snarl. So nothing too crazy amazing there, but Esper. And now moving on to the Mythical Collection for Keldeo. So these are usually kind of difficult to pop open. It's almost impossible to save the packaging, so I'm not going to bother trying. I don't usually st uh, store the boxes anywhere anyhow, so let's just carefully tear this open. Almost lose a fingernail in the process, but that's okay, I've got nine more. So, first things first, slide this all out, and take a look here. So this is the Caldeo in question, the foil promo card, with the ability justified. This Pokemon's attacks do 50 more damage to your opponent's Darkness Pokemon before applying weakness and resistance. Sacred Sword for 3 Water Energy does 100. This Pokemon can't use Sacred Sword during your next turn. Aww, oh, well, luckily a Pokemon Ranger can fix that up right nicely. So let's just get this unpacked and make sure the code card doesn't get seen before Sunday. We're going to be giving away. And it almost could, but there we go. I've got it. It is off to the side. Your chance to win that, just answer that question of the day, which I gave you earlier, and I'll give you again towards the end of the video. Again, we have our little descriptor here of all the different packs coming up for the special Mythical Pokemon collections. Looks like only Genesect and Meloetta are left to come in the later part of the year, and all of the uh, EX ones are out as well. And I love this little picture back here, all the Mythical Pokemon just waiting to be collected. So, let's toss that to the side as well. What we're really wanting to do now is, well, what we want to do is look at the packs, but let's take a look at the Keldeo pin. Let's make sure we can get nice and close and focused in on this guy. I did just recently watch the Keldeo movie featuring Kurum, and it's like, I've said this many times, i got to get back into the anime and watch it, and I never do, but I did make a point to watch this one, and it was pretty cool. One of those movies where, like, not a lot really happens outside of what Keldeo does. Ash was just kind of there. But some really cool animation, I really like the look of it. And there is the Keldeo itself in its uh, normal form, ordinary form I think it's called. Resolute form has a much bigger sword on its head. So we'll put you over here by Skullhead, if you can stand up okay. Stand up buddy, if you can't I'm gonna give up pretty quick, I got some stuff to do. And we're moving on. Alright, so let's refocus the camera. We got a Blastoise and a Pikachu. Hard to say what to go for. Pikachu is more in tune with my Pokemon because I have Shelbert and Pikachu, Shelbert the Squirtle. But Blastoise was on the cover of Pokemon Blue, so you know what? Let's open up the Pikachu first, actually. I think that is the way to go. So, I remember when I first opened up one of these collections, I was surprised that the Generations packs do not have a code card in them, but that's because the code card in the Keldeo pack unlocks both of these booster packs in the online game. So we gotta go one, two, three, one, two, and this should be the reverse foil if I did it right. So let's look at the four common cards out of our first pack of generations. Nice and focused again. Starting off with a Doduo. One of them looks like he's asleep there. A Fighting Energy with a Generations design to it. A Magmar, and I love the look of this. He's gonna fire punch your face. Look at that thing. Last common card is gonna be a Zubat. Now we should have uncommon cards beginning with a red card. The opponent shuffles her hand into the deck and draws four cards. That is kind of decent. I kind of like Judge more, because sometimes you want to get a, a better hand of cards yourself, and Judge makes both players shuffle to get four cards. We have Mr. Mime with Bench Barrier. Always good. Prevent all damage done to your opponent's... Sorry, not your opponent's. Prevent all damage done to your Bench Pokemon by attacks. Last uncommon is a Floral Crown. 
Next tool, at the end of your opponent's turn, heal 20 damage from the basic Pokemon this card is attached to. Definitely good for an EX deck. This should be Reverse Foil. Olympia. Switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. If you do, heal 30 damage from the Pokemon you move to the bench. So a switch plus a heal in one card. Is this the rare or the radiant collection? I'm not sure. It is going to be the rare. It's a Dug Trio with Earthquake and Rock Tumble. So the radiant collection card is a Diancy. I think I have one of you already. Sparkle. If the if, sorry, if the defending Pokemon tries to attack during your opponent's next turn, your opponent flips the coin. If Tails, that attack does nothing. Diamond Storm does 60. Heal 30 damage from each of your fairy Pokemon. And can we read the description down here? The Pokedex entry usually has something funny for these Radiant Collections. I don't know if it's going to zoom and focus in on this or not. Open the magic door and a dream colored party will start again today. I'll teach you the secret password. What's the secret password? We'll never know now because I dropped the card. So that is from the Pikachu pack. Now let's see what the last pack for today the Blastoise Collection, or Blastoise pack from the TCG Generations Collection, has to offer us in terms of rarity. There we go. So, one, two, three, one, two, and boom. Starting off with, of course, the commons. First up, we'll have a Magikarp with Epic Splash. I love that. I was more fan when uh, my pseudo widow did watch and learn and knocked out a Magikarp using its own Epic Splash. But anywho, we've got a Tangela here. We've got Geodude, and the last common is a Fire Energy of the Generations variety. Uncommon card starts with Team Flare Grunt, discard an active, sorry, discard an energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. Clement, search your deck for up to four Lightning Energy cards, reveal them, put them into your hand, and then shuffle. We got Charmander with Playful 20 times, flip a coin. If heads, this attack does 20 damage times the number of damage counters on this Pokemon. So you could, if you're lucky, do 120 damage, but the nice thing is the Charizard that comes in this set has a move called Recall that, for one energy, lets you use any of its previous evolution's attacks. Charizard has a lot more HP. It can do a lot of damage if it uses Playful and flips heads. So we do have the Reverse Foil card now as a Ponyta. Same art as from the Flash Fire set, I believe. The Rare card, I think it is, is going to be Nine Tails EX! Awesome stuff! We got an EX out of the box, that is cool. Flare bonus. Discard a Fire Energy card from hand. If you do, draw three cards. And Fire Blast for one Fire, three colorless. 130. Flip a coin. If Tails, discard a Fire Energy attached to this Pokemon. Or if Burning Energy would ignore that, it goes right back on. Not a bad card to get. You can sit by the Keldeo right back there. And the uh, Radiant Collection card is going to be... Look at this! Full Art Pikachu! Nuzzle and Quick Attack. And what are your... What does your card say? Hang on, let me focus in on this here. A yellow body is proof of good health. If you touch its bright red cheeks, you'll see its shining, smiling face. Aw, isn't that adorable? Look at this! I got Full Art Pikachu and Ninetales EX out of that same pack. Awesome! And which, interestingly enough, is the Pikachu pack had nothing. Not even the Pikachu. But those are what I got out of the packs. Hopefully you guys have just as much good luck with these code cards when you answer that question of the day. Once again, because it's been a little while since I mentioned it, question of the day is, do you think other Pokemon will gain access to the Battle Bond ability in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon? Leave your response down below in a comment with hashtag QOTD in your comment. And on Sunday, October 23rd, I'll choose two names that have answered the question with that hashtag to receive one of these codes each. And hopefully you have as much good luck in the online pack openings as I had with these pack openings today. With all that, I want to say thanks for checking out the news update today, folks. We are done. Come on back later on today for the first episode of Pokemon Sapphire for the week in which I haven't recorded it yet, but I have an idea what we're going to do. We have to prepare to revive Jiggy the Jigglypuff. And you can see what I'm talking about once you check that episode out. Anyway, and come on back tomorrow for... Stand up, Keldeo. Come on back tomorrow for the demo playthrough of Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon, at least the first episode. As I say, not sure how many episodes it's going to be, because I have no idea yet how long the demo is, but the first, if only, episode of the Sun and Moon demo will be going up tomorrow as soon as I can record, edit, and upload it, so come on back for that. Once again, I want to say thanks for checking out the news update today, everybody. Thanks for your support and your continued interest in the channel. If you're not currently subscribed, feel free to do so, because as soon as we hit 1,000, this Pikachu box is up for grabs, and another copy being mailed out, as I said. With all that, once more, thanks for checking out the news update, and Professor Chaz is signing off. I'll catch you next time.